unfortunately, my finger went through the tank. Uh, now, you may be thinking, Andrew, crikey, you must have been pressing quite hard. I, I promise you I wasn't. Hello, welcome to the video. I'm going to be doing some work on this Suzuki Carry today. So this is a 2004 Suzuki Carry four-wheel drive K-truck. I recently imported it from Japan. If you want to learn more about that, head over to andrewsjapanesecars.com. So you'll have seen from the title what I'm going to be doing. One of the first things I like to do when a car arrives, particularly when it arrives in the winter, as this one has, is to check the coolant. Just to check that it's up to spec, um, i.e. it's not going to uh, freeze at, uh, at the sort of temperatures that we might expect to see in the winter in the UK. The coolant tank on these is just there where I'm pointing and I'll bring you in a little bit closer in a minute. So I saw that and I did what I always do, which is try to rub the dirt off the front of the tank with my finger so I could get a look at the coolant level before then uh, dipping it and using the refractometer just to just check the freezing point. Anyway, as I was rubbing the dirt off, unfortunately, my finger went through the tank. Uh, now, you may be thinking, Andrew, crikey, you must have been pressing quite hard. I, I promise you I wasn't. I think what's happened is that the plastic on the front has uh, become brittle in the course of its, what are we talking, 17 years in the sun. And so my finger just went through it. Of course, that's no good because every time you drive the truck or you brake or you go around a corner, a bit of coolant's going to slosh out. And aside from making a terrible mess, eventually it will deplete the coolant level and affect the way the engine is cooled. So it needs a new tank. Here is said new tank. Not particularly expensive. However, to fit it, well, I'll, I'll bring you in closer now and I'll show you what we've got to do to fit it. So I'll just show you the hole. I don't know whether you can see it already. It's there if I shine some light on it. Let's just have a look at the camera. Yeah, you can see that. So there's a nice finger sized hole in the tank there. So I'll just open the bonnet now. I hope you're not expecting to find an engine under here. There we go. So here's the tank. And you see it goes all the way down there and we've got those hoses which we'll have to undo. So I'm pretty sure that the bumper's going to have to come off to get that tank out. You probably notice there's a piece of metal in there that's going to stop it sliding that way. I just think it's uh, it's one of those things where although taking the bumper off seems like a bit of a faff it's probably going to be the quickest way of doing it. So I haven't worked on one of these before uh, so I am learning as I go along. I've had a look at the parts diagram and it seems that most of what we've got holding the bumper in place are the plastic clips, which love to break. And so I've already bought some new ones to uh, in, in, in anticipation of these breaking. So we've got one, two, three there. There's one there and then I've looked in the wheel arch. There's another one there, and another one there. And then there are some clips at the edges of the bumper around the corners in the wheel arches as well. So. I'm going to try and take those off and see where that gets us. I'm probably going to leave that middle one in place until last because that will hopefully be the only one holding the bumper on if, I, if I'm right in having undone all the other clips. So let's go for it. Unbelievable, that's two out and neither of them have broken. I suspect that won't continue, but anyway, a strong start. So we've got one up here. Feels like there might be another one behind behind there. 
there. So I think we'll have that out. And that has got my least favourite type of clip. The plastic screw head clip. Right. That's good. That loose, that's loose. That wants to come forward. See if I can squidge this. I can, great. I'm gonna go and do the same on the other side now. So I hadn't planned on showing you the other side because it's just the same, but it uh, seems we've got a passenger. And unfortunately, he or she, or they, are on the clip that I need to undo. I haven't got a clue what this is. Uh, I hope it's not gonna pose a huge biosecurity risk to the UK by me removing it. I'll keep it in a sealed container maybe. It doesn't look particularly alive, uh, but I guess time will tell when we come to remove it. Unfortunately, I can't have the camera here and remove it at the same time because the camera is exactly where my hands need to go. Anyway, I'll be back with you when I have done this. Oh yeah, a little extra step that you may or may not need to do if you're following along at home. Okay, there's a couple more clips that I think I forgot to tell you about. And they are under here. That's one. Mouthful of grit as well, lovely. Right, let's see how that does for us. Hey. Looks kind of funny without the front on, doesn't it? Anyway, I'm really glad to have taken that off because as I said earlier in the video, I'm going to be rust proofing this. Uh, one thing that these K trucks don't seem to have very much of is weather protection. So I think they wouldn't fare too well uh, on a long term basis on the UK roads with salt and stuff. So really good to have all this exposed so that all, all these bits, which are in absolutely great shape for a 17 year old vehicle, uh, can, can stay that way. All right, we've got a much better look at it now. These are going to be, yeah, they're going to be 10 mils. I was going to say they're bound to be 10 mils, weren't they? I'll maybe take two of them off. I've tested this coolant already. It's actually really good. It's uh, protecting down to minus 40 based on my measurements. So I don't really want to throw it away. We've got two hoses coming off this and before I thought that one of them was a um, was just a, a drain for the excess but actually that just comes out the top there so th this one the, the back one of these two goes all the way back to the engine and then the front one of the two goes to the radiator so what I'm going to try and do is clamp them off so that we lose as little as possible and we don't let any air in
and just release that one from its clip on top of the radiator there. There we go. Fan shroud, I should say. Now, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to take this out with those in place, but let's see. I've got another jug ready because I'm going to try and pour the coolant out through the hole that I have made. So it can save as much of it as possible. A little bit sloshed out already, so I do need to top it up. I believe that clack was the piece of plastic that I pushed inside. Just put a rag in there, yeah, there you go, more of it breaks off, just to stop any drips. Now it would probably be a wise idea to take a picture of these Although as I'm videoing it, it's probably less crucial. So the front one, is going to the radiator. Should have done this already, but just make sure that the replacement looks about the same. It looks exactly the same, that's jolly good. Part number there for you, should you be interested. There we go. Right, now I've twisted that downwards. I can get them with pliers in. to do those clips. Right, let's see if we can get those hoses off. And I think I'm going to do some gentle levering with a screwdriver. Just to break the seal. It usually compresses the rubber up and just breaks the seal. I find that an effective way of doing it anyway. Oh, the video is focusing on the headlight. There. I'll keep pursuing that a little bit more, actually.
I think I might just like to have, or maybe I wouldn't. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I just like to have this radiator moving a fraction. if you can't see a great deal here. I was trying to do the, the rear pipe first and then the front one, but actually the front one's gone on more easily. So that means we can now Take that clip off. There we go, that was just the extra access I needed just to get my hand behind it so I could push that other hose into position. clip back in place. Try and match up the impression marks where the previous clip has been, or where the clip has been previously I should say, just because I'm like that. <laughs> So I've sieved the coolant, to get all the bits of coolant tank out of it. I've just put a little bit back, not all of it. So my aim with doing this is just to allow any bubbles that are in these hoses to float upwards into the tank. There shouldn't be many, but just, just to minimize the likelihood of introducing any air into the system, I thought I'd just, uh, just do that as, a, as an extra. So, on. Got a bit, bit of extra coolant so I can top this up to the full. That's just under but it is on a slope so because it's jacked up at the front so I think that'll be pretty much on the full when it's flat. I like to have my vehicles at, uh, <laughs> even though I'm going to be selling this one, I like to have them at, at full so because I find it just the easiest way to spot if anything's leaking. So full when cold. So last things to do, put the cap on, check for leaks. 
And then the final thing to do would be to start it up, check everything's getting warm as it should, check the heater's working, check the hoses are, are, are all getting warm, the radiator's warm to the top, so we've not introduced any air anywhere. Okay, thanks very much for joining me for this Suzuki Carry coolant tank replacement. I hope it was interesting or useful or even both for you. Uh, I'm not starting it up, warming it up, checking that everything is warming up as it should because I want it to be cold for some of the other work that I'm going to be doing on the vehicle and look out for the videos on that. So I'm going to be doing things like servicing it, that sort of thing. Obviously I want it warm to change the oil but I don't want it properly hot because then that will make things a bit difficult and I also don't want it really hot for the spark plugs either. Anyway, I digress. I'm leaving the front bumper off because I'm going to do some rust proofing as I said earlier and it'll be much easier to protect all of these lovely bits of nice clean albeit a little bit dusty metal with the bumper off so I'm going to leave it off for now. Hopefully you'll agree it's fairly straightforward putting it back though it's just those clips I'm going to replace the the, the big red clips there's one there one there and one there and the other small clips that were broken in the course of taking this apart. Although I must say, not as many broke as I, as I thought they would, given how old the vehicle is. So, thanks very much for watching. If you want to find out more about this vehicle, head over to andrewsjapanesecars.com. If you like this type of video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you again in the next one. Bye for now.